we're going to talk about one of those areas that, for martial artists anyways, it seems to be very controversial, and that's going to the ground in a fight. I can tell you that in 25 years experience as a teacher, that situation has almost never come up with students. I don't, I can't even think of a time that a student, well, I take that back, I can think of a time or two. I'm talking to train a thousand people, 25 years of training where somebody ended up on the ground with somebody and it turned into a grappling event. It just does not happen in real self-defense situations. I think it happens in fights more. And by fights, I mean when two guys agree to fight. And there are three phases to the ground. You go to the ground and uh, your attacker is on his feet. That's the most dangerous. Chris and I are gonna talk about that. You go to the ground and he's down there on the ground with you. I want us to talk a little bit about that. And of course, he goes to the ground and you're on your feet and you cannot escape him at this point. Chris, with your experience in law enforcement, and Chris is with a team that deals with violent apprehensions, criminal apprehensions, and drug enforcement. Uh, you've had a lot of combat experience. I've loved it too. You've been with me uh, for 25 years since you were a kid. And, and I love what you can come back and say, hey, I did this, this worked, that didn't work. What are your thoughts? And it's a little bit different too, I think, for law enforcement being on the ground. What are your thoughts and experience? And, and him and I have not rehearsed this on ending up in the ground with the guy on the ground with you. Yeah, so obviously most of the times where that would be, uh, where that would occur is usually like we're going after somebody and it's a foot pursuit and then multiple officers are, you know, just basically tackling him and doing some type of the dog pile and trying to get him in custody. Uh, personally, with myself, it, from the teachings that I've learned from Mark and just from basic, what would make sense to, to do is uh, the people that are on the ground and fighting, like Mark said, those are the people that are, hey, you know, we've been in each other's faces and we've been talking smack to each other. Now we're going to get into a fight and, you know, we both train MMA or whatever. And, once we once once our strikes, somebody's going to get thrown to the ground, and then we're going to do some Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and that's going to end up on Instagram, and someone's going to say world star or something. So that's not what you want to have happen in real life. What's going to happen is if is if you're taken by surprise, or you know you end up having to defend yourself. You want to you want to use strikes to get that person incapacitated on the ground. If at some point, because this is what I see happen a lot, people are fighting and somebody trips over something or if that happens you want to do everything you can to get off the ground as soon as possible it's a lot different being on the street than it is a map there's concrete there's concrete dividers there's cars it never ends up being a perfect sterile training environment to to work off of the ground which is different than in mma studios so do everything you can to get off the ground go for the eyes go for the testicles bite and get up and that works, you know. If, uh, there are almost no circumstances that you can't bite or gouge eyes uh, or do something horrific to the guy. Now the mount position, uh, we're going to talk about how to deal with it. It's a little easier to deal with than um, when it's in actual combat uh, than you might think. But again, it rarely comes up. I have never in all my years of teaching had a student come to me uh, that was in a mount position and had their face beat in. I know it happens in MMA. I know it happens on, like you said, it's gonna end up on World Star and some sort of fight. And a lot of those circumstances, if you look at them, you'd have to really agree that they're fights and fights being, they're agreed upon events. One guy wants to take on the other guy, the other guy's up for it. They step out back, kind of like it was uh, in the high school days. But eye gouging, biting, doing whatever you can to the guy, ripping ears off. This takes a mindset when you're down there. And the other thing too is he's got to get you to the floor in the first place. And one of the restrictions you have in a match is you can never hit the back of somebody's head or neck or use a weapon against it or rip an ear off when they come in. And uh, we'll deal a little bit more with this in the future, but frankly, I don't know that it needs a whole lot more dealing with. I think all of us in this you know, realm at this level that we do it at, we like to watch various fighters fight, 
to, to ask ourselves the question, what would I do if I were fighting him? And when you watch the uh, fights that end up going to the ground with these highly skilled fighters, you realize the only way to contend with such a highly skilled man would be to fight him or a high gouge or And you see the opportunity to do it almost entirely throughout the entire videos. They, the they're, not, they're not trained to look for that. They're, they know that their, ba their training and the stuff that they spend hours and hours a day training on is a certain set of rules that when people ask me, hey, what's American combat or what do you guys do? I say it's combatives and it's basically take all the rules that are in the MMA and those are the first things we will do. Yes. Yeah. We'll hit the throat, we'll gouge the eyes, we'll bite. You know, and I've, I've gotten questions in the past that, well, I must feel awkward if I ever go to the ground. And people don't realize my background is as a wrestler and it was Brad Steiner who broke me of that habit. Every fight I'd ever been in, I always liked to orient it to the floor because in those days I was very strong and of course short, and I liked getting the guy to the ground. And I had an incident one night where I almost got killed doing that because I got beaten and kicked from the other participants when I went to the ground with the guy. So I don't feel uncomfortable on the ground, but I'm gonna go right to gouging and biting because we're gonna get up as soon as we can. Here's the other thing about that. If you, in fact, were on the ground with a guy that were somewhat skilled in these skills, you can't beat him at what he's good at. Why would you try to do that? It would be like being up against a boxer, and you knew this guy was a boxer, and you thought, I got a box with him now. I better get some boxing lessons, rather than, I think I'm going to pick a chair up and go after him, or get a stick, get myself a weapon, or kick him in the balls, or kick him in the knee. Don't box a boxer. Don't wrestle a wrestler. So we're going to trump their hand with this. Okay, let's go into the situation now that is more dangerous and actually more likely to occur if, in fact, we do go to the floor. And that is, you're on the ground and the attacker is on his feet. All right, we're in that predicament. We're going to end up in that predicament where we're on the ground and the attacker's on his feet. That was what ended up happening in my situation. I was on the ground dealing with a guy and of course, it was the man on his feet that uh, gave me all the blues, kicking me in the head, and everybody kicked me in the head. And of course, you know, you see too often in these street fights, if you will, that are in fact fights, but people trying to kick, and they're not effective at kicking at all until somebody hits the ground, and now it doesn't take too much skill to take your boots to somebody's head and do some serious damage to them. The first thing when you're going to the ground is immediately shift your thinking to your feet. You're going to have to use your feet. Pull both of your knees to your chest and try to propel this guy off you immediately so he doesn't mount you. So let's say Chris and I are tussling about. I'm going to end up falling. As I'm going, the first thing I'm thinking is this, that I'm going to immediately get those feet on you. If somehow we ended up, he, no, he's here. You're where you are. I'd still get my feet on him. I don't care the angle here, but again, as soon as I'm going to the ground, as I'm falling, I'm thinking feet, 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 boom, and both feet are on him, launch him off me, he goes back, I get to my side. You're gonna get up as soon as you can. We're gonna kick from this position. I'm gonna trade roles uh, with Chris, he's gonna get up the, off the floor a little better than I, but when it is time to get up off the floor, I need to get up going backwards. Eventually get a post up on this hand and this foot, and I'm gonna swing my feet through and get up when the time is right. Chris is gonna demonstrate. He hit the floor, kicked out, good, he gets to his side. Well, of course, I'm gonna try and get around to his head and kick him in the head. He's not gonna let me do it. So as soon as I would get in range, he just blasts that knee right out, and I can see that's gonna be a dangerous thing. So let's say he, kicked out, let's go at this angle. He kicked out and he created the opportunity to post up and he gets up going backwards. You've got to wait, wait for the right time uh, to do that. You know, when you have the time to get up. How much time do you need to get up? That's what you need to know. So I know I need a little more room, a lot more room frankly than when I was younger and could bounce up off the floor a little faster and still get up okay, but Let's say you get up the, off the floor super slow. 
well, you're gonna, we're going to have to factor that in, you know, and you know, we can't teach you magic here. Maybe though it's the opposite circumstance, you get up off the floor fast, you're really nimble. You might, as soon as you hit the floor, get right back up again. Remember, he's going to have to get us to the floor. Now, another technique that we could use here is hook his ankle and, and break the leg. So, again, I'm going to be the guy falls, we're tussling up, yeah, boom, I hit the ground. I see this ankle and I grab it and hook it and I'm going to quickly pull and kick the knee. Everybody, you can see, don't do this with your partner, but boy, do I have him in a vulnerable spot. Maybe too, I was kicking out and he slipped inside of me like that. So I see this opportunity to hook either leg. Maybe I'm like this and he's over here. And I see, I can spin, I got it here. I was able to trap it on this side. The ankle hook knee break. Get down on the floor, practice your side kicking from here, your ability to spin, follow that attacker. Today's lesson was fighting from the floor. A few remarks on the video you just watched regarding law enforcement officers and teenagers and the merits and pluses of grappling for, for close quarters combat. I would say about 90% of the situations involving law enforcement officers where they go to the ground, the style of grappling that I teach is inappropriate. Obviously, when you're dealing with a suspect who's trying to flee and is resisting but not really attacking you, and even in some cases where he's attacking, the maiming and uh, types of techniques that I teach on the ground are totally inappropriate. Uh, but what about that other 10% of those situations where your life is on the line and it's kill or be killed at that point, then it is completely appropriate you law enforcement officers, you make sure that you go home to your families, to your wife, and that you're intact and whole and not killed or maimed by this uh, violent assailant. Perhaps he's going for your firearm. But I wanted to point that out. It's another reason why I generally don't teach teenage boys uh, the type of mindset, mindset that I instill in students is certainly not appropriate if a a young man is attacked by another young man and sometimes it would be appropriate if if a gang of teenagers attacked another teenager go for the eyes all the things I talked about but in most cases it would be inappropriate and it would certainly make sense for that young man to get training in uh, perhaps Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or wrestling or judo or you know some kind of sport uh, t type of activity also, I wanted to address, uh, I'm not saying that it's not helpful for a person to have a background when it comes to close quarters combat in, let's say, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or wrestling. These things are certainly very helpful to have in the uh, repertoire. It's just a matter of how much time you have to put into training. And anyone who's grappled knows that it takes a long time to get effective at this. And what about the elderly? Are they going to go learn grappling? They're not, not going to be able to do it. Is a woman going to grapple a guy to the ground? But there's no doubt about it that if you've got a background in grappling, um, it's certainly going to be helpful to have that in your toolkit. But you're going to want to put the majority of time uh, in your training in what's really going to uh, matter, and that's striking, attacking, clawing, ripping biting, gouging, these kind of activities. Uh, I have two friends, one's now deceased, uh, that fought a lot, one in particular. And uh, both of these individuals were highly skilled grapplers. And the one man in particular who had knocked out so many people and had been in so many fights in so many circumstances, I asked him one time, I said, do you ever grapple when you fight? And he said, why would I grapple when I can hit the guy? And I think that sums it up pretty well.